Hey, look, we're in the Kona N. Yep. This is the hot version. This is the car that you need. This is the only car yeah. that you will ever need forever and ever. Wow. Okay. SUV versatility, uh -huh. and you can take it on track. And it yeah. can be your only car, gets good gas mileage, it's small enough to park it. You will never need another car. This does it all. <laughs> Are right? you writing the marketing brief for this car now? No, I read the marketing oh, brief. Oh, <laughs> oh, there you go. That makes more sense. Okay, yes. That is that is exactly what it, what's going on. Great cars, great roads, and all the reasons we love to drive. TV, web, and podcast. This is Everyday Driver. The key thing to think about here is because the U.S. specifically has an aversion to wagons, what's happening now is they're even taking away the hot hatchbacks. Yeah. Because this yeah. is the entire running gear of the Hyundai Veloster N, which we really like. Now, I will admit the Hyundai Veloster N is a weird three-door thing. I understand that. But ultimately, what is it? It's a hot hatchback. Yeah. And Hyundai yeah. first killed the Veloster and left the Veloster in. Now they are killing the Veloster in. And if you want the closest thing they now sell to the Veloster in, it's now this, the Kona in. I like this car. It's good. I like that it exists. Mm -hmm. I like that N is now very special nomenclature from Hyundai. I like that it means developed in Nam Yang and developed on the Nurburgring. Yes. N stands for so many things. <laughs> it does. Most of all, performance. And nobody is ready for this because you're right. most people on the road think, ah, oh, a little SUV hatchbacky thing, and then you're gone. Yes. You can beat pretty much everybody off the line. Well, there's a little bit of turbo lag, and the car can't quite decide if you're serious or not. And then if you stick your foot in it and you keep it there, it knows you're serious. You know how to tell it you're you serious? You might as well pin your head back against the seat. <laughs> Here's how you tell you're serious. It's this little button right here. NGS, the N Grand Shift, goes down to the lowest gear yes. possible, gives you overboost. There it is. That's everything it can do. I get the little front wheel drive squirreliness. Yeah. I get 20 seconds of overboost that takes this from 276 horsepower to 286 in overboost. Yeah. This is genuinely fast. Are we grinning? We, I, we are. Did it work? Maybe out of terror. No, but in, grin, uh, in the letter, in, grin, shift is unbelievably contrived, but and I can't super, believe I've just said it multiple it's times. It's dorky enough to work. Maybe. It's, it's just goofy well, enough to be like, okay, I'll give that to you. Thankfully, it does work, though. It does actually. Yeah. It drops the lowest gear possible in the eight-speed transmission, which is a good DCT, and it gives you that little bit of overboost, that 10 extra horsepower, yeah. and this thing takes off. It takes off so much, you have to, not as bad as the old Mazda Speed 3, but in that kind of world where it's kind of like, whoa, all right, we got it. We're good. It's front yeah. wheel drive just takes off and trouts its way down the road. Yes. You're off, man. It it's is, very cool. It's a cartoon character. Character. It it's is. A, like a little caricature of really hot sports cars. It's like the little <laughs> wannabe, and it's got something to prove. It's taking you along for the ride, uh -huh. and it is fun. And by the way, Hyundai likes their acronyms. There's N Power Shift, there's N Track Sense uh -huh. Shift, but they clearly state you can take this on track, mm -hmm. good gas mileage when you're cruising around in normal mode. Yep. And then, yeah, you're sitting like you're at a dinner table. You're sitting up high and yes. straight forward. Very vertical, yep. That SUV kind of thinking. Mm -hmm. Even though the car could sit lower on its suspension, it's still and got way too much jounce. You know what it'd be? Would it be like if you dropped it on its suspension? It'd be like a hatchback. But we can't call it a hatchback. This would be a hatchback if you actually put it on its suspension like it should. One of one of my Dang only it. real critiques of this, because I understand it's an SUV, I get it, is the fact that it feels like it's on its tiptoes and not like on its tiptoes ready. Like if you just settle down, I feel like I'm on my tiptoes. If you just settle down, <laughs> you'd be more balanced. It's abrupt in all of its movements, and it has a lot of body yeah. roll because it's an SUV. If you lowered this back down, it would become a hatchback, and it would actually handle better. Yes. That doesn't mean it handles bad, because it handles surprisingly well. Yep. There's just a lot of body roll, and you have this kind of tipsy up high feel. You're going faster than a high chair in this, and it's impressive. <laughs> yes. Okay? When I drive this, I just keep thinking, this, this exact Kona would be better lowered and turned into a hatch. Yes, why don't we embrace it? Why Why were hatchbacks considered not the cool thing anymore? They've always been cool. I think they will always be cool. But this car feels like you're standing while driving. <laughs> it does, yes. It's like a stand-up desk. It it's a stand-up desk for your automotive enjoyment. It's going to be kinda great. Yep. I hear you. It's got great backseat space mm -hmm. when you fold the seat down. I'm not talking about sitting back there. That's terrible because it's a tiny little hatch. It, it is little. But when you fold the seats, lots of space. It's pretty usable, yeah. pretty functional. 
you could maybe get all four of your track tires in the back, go to the track, but I guess you don't need to because it already comes with Pirelli P0s. I can't believe that, by the way. 19 inch yep. and really good brakes. Customize your settings with mm -hmm. the two blue buttons on the steering wheel. Yep. You can choose what you want the car to do. Yep. It's already got five modes, but then you can kind of customize the exhaust, the stability control, what you want the throttle response to feel like. Yeah. That is Hyundai's hallmark for N vehicles. And I yes. love that they did that yes. recipe on this. It just needs to be lower, so <laughs> it's a hatchback because it's a, as big as a hatchback. It looks like a hatchback. Imagine just three, four inches lower. Hatchback. <laughs> this is more usable than the Veloster M. I will definitely say that. It's you more have, usable. You have more back seat it's space. Got an you extra have door. Real, you have real door. Exactly. Four hole doors. You have an actual <laughs> hatch space. I, I get the usability of it. I'm not actually blaming Hyundai or pointing fingers at Hyundai for this because this is the industry right now. It's SUVs are all we're building. And if yeah. everybody was buying the Veloster, yeah. they wouldn't have made this. True, but what they they've done and they is needed to do exactly. something onto it. And I and hatch. I love this drivetrain we're in love with. This this two liter is powerful and I love the customization as you yes. said. They yes. have better customization than almost anybody out there. When they offer performance vehicle, most people go, yeah. here are your modes and you can tweak this one little thing. Right. Hyundai said, here are the modes and here are all the parameters. What do you want to do? Exactly, which is excellent. All right, so let's take a look at the styling. The fender arches that are usually the black plastic and kind of make it look like an off-roady sort of SUV are now painted but that means there's six surfaces between the hood and the fender just <laughs> doing things lots of highlights a lot of visual interest it looks snorty if you look really close it looks kind of aggressive and you think that's a little bit different that looks like a hot hatch hat hatch uv yeah. hatch uv <laughs> or something that is the title <laughs> right. it is a hatch uv <laughs> ladies and gentlemen we coined it here there's a registered trademark on it it goes forward from here that's it so look around the back the lights that you think are the lights are not the lights same thing mm. with the headlights those are not the headlights those are the turn signals that you got to drop down lower to see the actual headlights but hyundai's getting away with introducing fresh new styling. It mm. looks interesting and fun, and the end designation has that red pinstripe along yep. the black yep. trim, and the color is sort of blue. It's sonic blue, but it's not a blue, and it doesn't look like blue, even though it's sort of like a dirty white. It's not white, it's not blue, it's not gray. It doesn't look it's good on none camera. of the above. <laughs> it's very hard to color correct and make it look like it looks to your eye. Look at the back. It's got the dual layer rear spoiler with the triangular shaped rear center rear light. Very cool. Very aggressive. And then when you get in, you're just left with an SUV. Mm -hmm. There's no real trim that would say this is premium, but it doesn't have to be because this is almost $36,000, somewhere in there, right? And it's loaded. Just, just under. It's loaded yeah. at under $36,000. Now, you can't get it in all-wheel drive, which is a bit of a bummer. It's only front-wheel drive, yeah. But it, this has everything that Hyundai is doing now. Their interface is good. Of course, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, all of that it's is good. It. It's got their, it. Their iPad up here that does all of the, the screen. I mean, it looks like an iPad. Turn it off. It really looks like an iPad. It looks like, it looks like an extra big phone. But that's really the good. thumbprints on it. Totally. You can Ooh, use trying still. to reach through the steering wheel and we're touch go, this. We're going to do that. That's, that day is coming. So, <laughs> All the screens are good and bright and everything's very usable. There's nothing to slight about the usability of this. No. I mean, there's actual buttons and knobs. I mean, they've Actual buttons. Up. That is huge. You're right, though. It's just, it's the very abrupt, it's the van. <laughs> it's the, the car you drive while standing. <laughs> I like that. You gotta drive. <laughs> Stand up. I don't know why we're sitting. The most interesting part of the car is the steering wheel. Mm. Look around the interior. There's relatable shapes. There's the hot dog shape and there's a lot of circular shapes, but that's just relatable. It's going to look good. It's going to look fine. Mm -hmm. There's good textures and it does feel premium without looking premium. It doesn't feel cheaply made, even though it doesn't look it doesn't like a premium look interior. like it, but it yeah. feels pretty good. Yeah. But the most interesting thing in the car is the steering wheel. So the driver will be having the most fun because they're driving anyway, but still, look at all this cool textures and shapes and colors, and there's stuff going on with this car. The paddles <laughs> are huge. They're not just little ears. They're actually they're pretty large. Mm -hmm. There's some seriousness about this car. The textures are almost 20 years ago Audi. The good stuff. It, it, it does feel good, yes. Actually, that really is, good. It's great to interact with, for sure. And the seating position is tall, mm -hmm. but the seats are really good. They thought yeah, about seats over here, that's the good. lumbar, even though that seat is not power. Ooh, got more lumbar over here. I think I'll sit up straighter. Yeah. <laughs> Can we get you a board to a standing <laughs> position? It's one of those chairs that lifts you up to standing. It's one of those. Pretty yeah. much does. Look at the meat. 
between the floorboard and the top of the seat. Look how much seat there is. They're uh, sitting yes. way up. That makes that makes it the SUV. I guess. Right. The hatch UV. Hatch Here UV. we are. All right. This car is not offered with a manual transmission. Unfortunately, the, the Veloster was. The Veloster was, and you'd think that would turn it into the hatchback. But they wanted to keep it SUV, keep it accessible as to as many people as possible. So that means there is a DCT, eight speeds yes. with wet friction like a bike. Yep. So that means you can take it to the track and not worry about your transmission and thrash it. You get a subscription for your P0 tires and go to the track. <laughs> yes, that is appealing. And if this is the car you're looking at for only one car, this is what the Golf R should be. This energy and this feeling and the way it drives mm, and you're in sport mode, it just sort of feels ready to go at all times. You're on boost and then when you go NGS, Oh, I can totally feel that 10 extra horsepower. Yes. I totally feel well, it. Well, it finds that lower gear. We're it gets booking, really serious. Man. Yes, it goes. It oh, definitely wow. goes. That's pretty quick. It's very impressive. It, the <laughs> dynamics here are excellent. <laughs> They're excellent, except for that initial turn, you feel like, I'm sitting really tall. For the fact that I'm it is a little <laughs> SUV and it should yes. be lower. If you take that in, out of the equation, that you're going, this actually <laughs> handles really well. It does. It's too tall, but it just handles great. It reminds you that you're sitting way up high. Yes. If only three or four inches, just make that part of the N package and we're good. You and I are not guys that ever say stance a car until now. <laughs> stance this thing. This, this needs to be stance. Yes. That would be perfect. Yeah, chucking into most corners, you're going to surprise everybody. The P0s will, will grip like crazy. Yes. Everybody would be like, what is that little thing? Uh -huh. N what? N line? Yeah. Nope, not the N line. It's the N designation tuned on track and that does make it special. And for this price, it could be the do-it-all car. You could put yep. winter tires on here. It'd be yep. fine. Front-wheel yep. drive. Yeah. And I like that it keeps it a little bit lighter, not being all-wheel drive. Yeah, it's 3,300 pounds, which is not it's very not, heavy. Not bad. Most cars being shot for, and most, if not all SUVs you can think of, weigh more than this at 3,300 pounds. That's yeah. where the, the front-wheel drive helps you. This is this weighs as much as a hatchback. You realize? That? That's weird. It's kind of like a hatchback. Huh. That's really strange. Those Hatch are hatchback me. numbers. Anyway, <laughs> the other thing about this that I keep thinking when I drive it is this. There's one mode it doesn't have. Okay. And that is the sit down, calm down mode, because it's always excitable. Well, I tried eco. It, like, it dial back it, to eco here. It's still it's still jittery. It's wonderfully juvenile. And yeah. sometimes you want it to grow up just a little bit. You just want to grow up this. Okay, you're you're 17 and awesome. I need you to be 25 for the next 10 minutes. Okay, just just but stop being juvenile. That it, setting it is not in drive mode. It doesn't happen. It isn't yes. here. But it, right. but it but it does mean it's fun all the time. It's just sometimes you want to just you just want to sit. You just want to sit down. See, normal is it's still frantic. It's still it is on frantic edge. is a good word. It is very frantic. It's just ready to which go. Which is really fun. But then every now and then you want to be like, you know what I want to do? I need a, I need a chill mode. That should be just chill. Should be chill. Yeah. With as many acronyms and contrived mm -hmm. names on here, chill would work just fine. In chill? And Or no, chill. chill in. Chill in. It needs right. a chill in mode, Hyundai. It's I like very it. Fun. It's it just is. not the car that I want. Mm. It's too tall. And if I'm going to get a hatchback, there's other choices on the market. There are. Mm. But for the do-it-all car, and it still offers that track thing dangling out here, kind of asking you to chase that, that's pretty special. Not yep. every car company kind of tells you to take your car to the track. True. I'm thinking about competitors to this, and I can think of three real quick. This is far more fun and interesting to drive than the Subaru Crosstrek, which is also a hatch UV. Yes. But the Crosstrek... That's a low bar. Like, the, riding lawnmowers are far more engaging. But the Crosstrek is more all-purpose, all-weather usable with the great all-wheel drive system. Okay. It is more fun than the excellent Mazda CX-30, but the Mazda CX-30 has a more luxurious feel. Yes. It is much more SUV than the GTI, and the GTI feels more premium. Yes. But the GTI can't get the fun demeanor of this. It has the more luxury feel, but it can't quite get as frantic and fun as this. True. So it's kind of where do you land as a driver? All of the things I've mentioned are similar in price. They're all similar in size. This is the craziest of that foursome, for sure. <laughs> I was at a light, and there was some kind of black car next to me. Probably an SUV. Probably was, in white, gray, or black. white SUV, I yeah. hate to say it. I don't know who the driver was. I didn't even look. But they thought, I'm going to give it the beans. I'm going to beat this car. And I was half throttled and I thought, really? <laughs> you don't know what this is. Yeah. 
True. And then I gave it all the throttle. Mm. And I checked my rearview mirror, and they were a dot. <laughs> yes, that's true. That's what's fun about this. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it does take the corners well. It's just not a sports car. Yeah. It's just not. It pretends, it wants to be, it aspires to be, when it grows up, wants to be a sports car. And that's no bad thing, because sure. the things it can do, it shouldn't. If it were three or four inches lower, it would. <laughs> oh, we have fun. At least we have fun. <sighs> Hatch UV.